All right, welcome to the statistics notes for section 1.1. This title is, What is Statistics? The object of this lesson is to identify variables, populations, and levels of measurements in statistics. So we're just going to get a broad overview of basically what statistics is. What is statistics? It is simply just taking data and collecting it, organizing it, analyzing it, and interpreting it. So it's just going to take a large amount of numbers and just doing a lot of different things. That's what this class is all about. Okay. In order to start this, we kind of needed to establish what a individual is. Obviously, we all should know that an individual is just a person or object included in a study. So it doesn't matter kind of what it is. If it can be a person, it can be an object, it can be a place. It, it's all hinged upon kind of what the um, study is doing. A variable. You're going to hear this word over and over and over again. It's a characteristic of the individual to be measured or observed. So we're either going to measure or observe something, and we're going to call that a variable. And there are two different types of variables. The first one is quantitative. Quantitative involves numerical values, numerical measures. Okay? Operations such as adding and averaging and things like that will make sense. That's why it can be quantitative, so like the number of siblings you have can be one instance. The other possibility of a variable is qualitative. All right? Qualitative describes an individual by placing it in groups or categories. So an example would be a brand of computer, okay, Macintosh, um, Apple, whatever, HP, kind of that's the idea of a brand. Caution, it's written right there, qualitative variables may be numerical, but the mathematical operations won't make sense. And I'll show you a few examples of these right now. Okay, the purchase price of an MP3 player, say it's $300, is that qualitative or quantitative? This one would be quantitative because numerical money makes sense. So I would say this is quantitative, whereas actually all the rest of these, the model number for an MP3 player, uh, 21883, that numerically, I mean, yeah, it's a number, but it doesn't make sense when you start thinking, oh, can I add it to something? Can I subtract it to something? That does not make sense at all. Also, gender, there's a group. Religious affiliation, a group. A zip code, like 58078 for West Fargo, is a number, but once again, can you add zip codes together and make sense of it? No, you cannot. And political party, once again, is a group. So all of these we could list as qualitative instead of quantitative. Quantitative has to have a numerical representation that makes sense. Okay. Population data to sample data. Okay. Population, if you think of population of West Fargo, you think everybody that lives in West Fargo or the population of North Dakota, it's everybody. Population of the United States, it's everybody. Okay. So you have to think population is going to mean everything in your Okay, every part of the individual of interest it can be a state, a nation, or even more specifically, the selling price of all iPods at Walmart. We can actually look that up and find all of them. That's population. Whereas sample is a little bit different. It's a part of only some of the individuals of interest. A part of the population would be a sample. And in this class, Getting a population is very, very, very difficult, so we're going to be talking about getting samples uh, quite a bit in this section or in this uh, class. So an example of a sample would be selling prices of iPods for Walmart stores in only Fargo, not anywhere else. Okay? Here's an example of variables. Okay? Television station KVLY wants to know the proportion of TV owners in North Dakota who watch station's news program at least once a week. The station asked a group of 1,000 TV owners uh, in North Dakota if they watch the news at least once a week. And it says identify the individuals of the study and the variable. Okay. Well, the individuals of the study will be the 1,000 TV owners that kind of watch the news or that where they're asking, not watch the news, but that they're actually asking. And the variable is the response of does or does not want to watch the news program. So that's kind of the difference. The individuals are the 1,000 TV owners that they ask. The variable is kind of their answer. Is the variable qualitative or quantitative? Is it a number or are they throwing them in the groups? Definitely qualitative as categories are two possibilities, does and does not. 
And do the data comprise a sample? Absolutely, because it's just 1,000 of the however many people that live in North Dakota that own a TV. And what is the implied population? This is a question you'll be asked in your homework quite a bit. The implied population from the sample would be all TV owners in North Dakota because they specifically just asked about 1,000 TV owners in North Dakota. Well, we want to know the implied population would be the entire population of North Dakota. The last part of this section is talks about levels of measurement. Okay, So you can take any specific thing and we're going to place it into what kind of level of measurement is it? Nominal ordinal interval ratio. They go up in that order from least to greatest and we're going to talk about kind of what each one is right now. Okay, So nominal. Nominal would be your lowest one. It consists of names, labels, categories. Example, gender, male or female, eye color, blue, brown, green, hazel, whatever. Cities, you just list them. Basically, if you name things, label them or categorize them, it's nominal. All right. Ordinal, data can be ordered, which kind of makes sense with the word. But the differences between the data values are meaningless, which means kind of if you think of worst to best, okay, class rank, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, to up to 400th or however many are in your class. Yes, you are in order. You're ordering them. But the difference between one and two might only it might be nothing because you might be tied or it might be just minuscule. So we don't really know the difference between them. We cannot use the um, kind of math between them. Okay, It doesn't make too much sense. So class rank rating scales, you'll see that a lot. The poor, fair, average, good, excellent. Okay, Or dislike or not like or agree or kind of agree, disagree, those sorts of things are all types of ordinal levels of measurement. Interval, now we're moving up a little bit more. So not only can you name them or order them, data can be ordered and the differences between the data are meaningful. So now we're going one step above. We can order them kind of like class rank, but instead we have to be able to have math be meaningless. So for instance, three more or seven less of something. Can you kind of do math? So for instance, a year, okay? That makes sense because I can order them and yep, 2004 was indeed eight years ago or however you want to think about it if it's the year 2012 right now. Degrees Fahrenheit, all degrees Fahrenheit fall into interval and I'll talk about that more in a second. But you can know that, you know, when it's 69 degrees outside, that's nine more degrees than 60 degrees. There is a difference there. Okay, the difference between ratio and interval, the data can be ordered, differences and ratios are meaningful. Since a ratio is meaningful, that means there has to be a meaningful zero value, as in zero the way we think about it. Like when we have zero money, we have actually zero dollars. Okay, time, when I think of time, that's like time it takes to go somewhere. Can it take you zero minutes to go somewhere? When you think about it, no, but it's a concrete number because if it's two minutes to get somewhere, I know that's from time when I started at zero to two minutes. Okay, Weight. I know what zero pounds is. Okay, So when I get weighed at 180 pounds or whatever, I know that difference. Pressure in wheels. Okay, I know a flat tire has absolutely no pressure in it. That's a concrete zero. The reason that degrees Fahrenheit okay, is back up at interval is, is there a concrete zero for degrees Fahrenheit or even degrees Celsius for that matter. There is no concrete zero temperature. Okay, And that's a big battle. We'll discuss this more in depth in class. But for instance, zero degrees to one degree or one degree to two degree, you, you can't really tell. It's just one degree warmer. It's not that you can actually go twice as hot or twice as warm because there is no actual like zero degree unless we actually go into Kelvin or something, and that's another story, and we can talk about that in class more in depth. So here are six different ones that I want you to actually push pause right now, do them yourself, and then I'm just going to write them what they are right now. So salesperson performance, below average, average, above average, that would be ordinal, because you can order them, but the math does not matter. Price of a company stock. That has to be ratio because you can actually have a stock that's zero dollars. So I know what that is. Names of new products. Nominal. 
because we are listing the names. Room temperature in a classroom, degrees Fahrenheit. So anything that involves temperature, it's going to be interval. All right, because you can you know, do the math between it, but there is no zero value. Ratio needs to be a zero value. Gross income for each of the last five years, you can make zero dollars. So I know that this can be ratio. It's numerical. We can do actually do numerical values and math between it, and it has a zero value. And then the last one, the color of any packaging is going to be nominal. When you list out names, it is nominal. Okay. When you come to class tomorrow, we will discuss these problems, and you will have time to work on them. And then you'll have your group quiz at the end of the hour. We'll see you then.